All right, so you heard me talking about how much I was not a fan of the Super, right? You look at the Super, and now the Super is officially out. People are like, oh, yeah, and they start doing these renderings, and there's some that look pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. But, like, the coolest one has a retractable wing. I'm like, there is no retractable wing on it. You can't just put, like, a McLaren or, a, like, a P1 wing on your car and say, like, yeah, look, this is how cool it could look. If you could make the Supra look that cool, or you can make the Super Super modelable, what's to differentiate making the BMW M4 or Z4 Super modelable? So if you can do the same things to the BMW Z4 as you can to the Supra, then is there really a point in having the Supra? Either way, I'm going to buy one. You know, I, like I, I talk about it and I, I wasn't thrilled with it, but uh, I'm going to purchase one and I'm going to put it in my rental fleet because I will let consumer demand step like stand behind whether the car is cool or not i'll be objective about it like if i put it out there and people are renting it great but you need a benchmark because it's easy to say like well the ferraris go out all the time the super doesn't nobody's really looking for a supra i'm also going to get the gt500 that's a cool car let, let me let me first give praise to ford for making a a cool car the GT500 is, it looks cool. Um, it's got a lot of grunt behind it. It's got over 700 horsepower. It's a DCT transmission, which, you know what, at 700 horsepower, I'm not really going to argue with them. Um, let's just call that crowd control so people can hopefully keep the car in a straight line a little bit better. But the GT500 is probably the first Ford other than the uh, 0506 Ford GT that I was looking forward to purchasing. Also, I'm not going to purchase this for myself. I'm going to put it in the rental fleet. Not to say I wouldn't buy it after the rental use, but I'm going to put both of these cars, the GT500 and the Supra, in the Gotham Dream Cars rental fleet and let people, like, I'll just let the numbers do the talking. We'll see reliability on both ends. Um, the only thing that sort of concerns me is they're putting a line lock in the Mustang, which I'll probably disable. I don't want people ripping burnouts in the car because we'll be going through tires too quickly. And that if you got a guy doing a burnout, doesn't really know how to do a burnout. I just want to stay away from that liability. So I'll make sure traction control stays on on both cars because I want people to enjoy them, enjoy them safely, and enjoy them with traction control on. One of the biggest kickers, I've usually disabled traction control in my cars. One of the biggest kickers is always when somebody's like, oh, if I can't take off traction control, I can't enjoy the car. So bring it back. No problem. We're, you know, I'll send you your money back right now. Because that guy is either the guy that crashes, and I don't need that, or he's the guy beating the balls off the car and trying to drift it, doing donuts, doing burnouts, and I don't need that. It's, it's unnecessary. You're not paying for that sort of use. There's companies that do pay for that sort of use. Hey, we're going to take the car to the track, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. But I charge them four or five times the daily rate per day that they use that use, and they have to put their own tires on, and if they use it long enough, I make them swap the brakes. Uh, funny story, the 458 that we used to have was actually rented by um, Ferrari when they were designing the Z06, and that's pretty cool. Or was it the 430 for the Z06? I don't remember which one it was, but I definitely remember they rented one of our Ferraris to um, ship down to Atlanta and test out to design the Z06 and, or even the ZR1. And uh, I remember they went off track, they replaced the front bumper, they swapped the brakes, they swapped the tires, and they paid us a good amount of money. So it was a good deal for me. I was happy. Uh, they took care of it, but it was, it was declared use, not like a guy just going out looking to take a car for 500 bucks and then just smoke through a set of tires, which is going to cost me 1000 or whatever, 800 So um, that being said, uh, you've got two cars. I'm going to buy them both. Uh, I'm really impressed with the Ford GT500, the, the renderings that people were coming up with, or the, the hints, all pointed towards a cool-looking car, badass car, and Ford delivered on that, so yay to you. And uh, the Supra, I feel, still, again, the reveal to the, the official reveal, so it's, it's all out. Uh, everything's on the table. It's exactly what we knew it was going to be three or four days ago that I wasn't super thrilled with. It's... In the spirit of tuner cars, uh, all the Photoshop where people are swapping wheels on it, it looks a little bit better, but they're also like super saturating the car and then throwing shadows here or there to highlight and low light. Like it's until you see the car in person and until you swap the wheels and you start seeing stuff on it, it's going to be really hard to say whether the Supra is really going to catch. 
I, I really don't think it should be called a Supra. I think it's a cool BRZ, as I said, but I'm gonna buy one and I'm gonna buy that. It's between the two. I think the Supra is gonna be about 55 grand. I'll get the launch edition one. That should be available sooner. GT500, I, I'm going out on the limb on both of these cars because dealers can screw this up for everybody. I'd like to get it in your hands. I'd like you guys to be able to drive these cars. I'd like to be able to put them in my rental fleet, but Ford notoriously doesn't rein in their dealers and you start seeing these cars being sold and then like egregious markups for a dealer inventory. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna order the car, but we want 20 over. I'm not paying over sticker. Like never gonna pay over sticker. Like there is zero chance in hell I'm gonna pay over sticker for either a GT500 or a Toyota Supra. Now, that being said, I do not have any orders in. So if you have a dealership and you would like to sell me one at list, I'll give you guys a shout out. Uh, just shoot me an email, rob at superspeeders.com, and I will get the orders in through the dealership and we'll get them inventoried as soon as we can and into the rental fleet. Uh, we'll even maybe throw them on the Dream Car Tours, allow people to compare them directly with the Ferraris and the Bentleys and the Aston Martins and the Z06 and, and getting these comparisons out there. So if you're interested in that, go ahead. If you're interested in renting a car when it does hit the fleet, uh, email info at gothamdreamcars.com and uh, mention which car you want and we'll put you on a list. Obviously, the sooner you're on the list, the sooner we will give you uh, the opportunity to rent. Uh, the cars are gonna be in the New Jersey fleet, so in the North Jersey fleet, New York, Boston, DC, that, uh, that blast radius will be happy to make the car available for anyone in that range. Uh, the rate on the car is probably gonna be similar. The GT500 will probably be about 400 bucks, 450 a day. I gotta work out the, the pricing dynamic on that. And the Supra may be a little bit cheaper. The Supra will probably be like 325, 350 a day. Um, so if you guys are down, you let me know. If you got a car available, I don't want, I'm not paying over list. Don't get, I wanna spec it out. I wanna order it. I would like to get it and I'm going to rent it. Uh, and I'm gonna do that for both. So as long as there's no games being played by the dealers, which fingers crossed on Ford's end, because every GT350, every Focus ST, every Focus RS, yeah, I mean, you name it, there's always some sort of markup that ends up just making you shake your head. And they create this like little fictitious demand and then they sit on the cars for a while and then they end up selling to somebody else. Whatever the situation is, serious buyer here, wanna buy two cars and I'm looking forward to it. So eventually I'll have them. Hopefully I'll have them, I think later this summer when they start getting released. But as soon as I have them, you guys will know. Uh, shoot me an email, rob at superspeeders.com if you're a dealer selling them. Shoot me an email, uh, info at gothamdreamcars.com if you are looking to get on the list to rent either of them. And yay Ford. Let me, let me give you a, a slow, just slow golf clap because uh, I think that was, I think the GT350 was a good car. I think the GT500 is an awesome car. For those of you not familiar with my other company, I started a company called Adventure Drives, which combines driving and bucket list travel. So it's a lot of fun. Our next trip is up to the Northern Lights in Iceland at the end of February. We're gonna be doing snowmobiling on glaciers, off-roading, taking a dip in the Blue Lagoon, and drinking whiskey until we're silly. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. After that, we're off to Europe for a trip in July. If you're interested, prices can be done per person. It starts at about $3,000 per person for Iceland. Don't worry, if you don't have somebody to go with you, we can match you up with somebody. You can check the link in the description for adventuredrives.com and sign up today.